Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. I asked when I did the Easter kit from Simon Says Stamp if you wanted to see some interactive cards with Easter and the overwhelming response was yes. So many of these components were from that kit, but you definitely don't need the kit to create these. Um, especially it is sold out. However, everything I am using is available individually. I am using some Lawn Fawn interactive products today. This is the Swish and Pop pull tab. And this is one of the newest interactive sets from Lawn Fawn and it's fantastic for creating a pop-up design. All of my cards are gonna start with a pattern paper like background, some interactive elements, and finish with a sticker scene. Basically, the stickers are replacing what we would stamp, color, and die cut before. They save tons of time, and I think these Doodlebug stickers, any of them from any of the seasonal collections or themed collections are so much fun. So what we wanna do first is I assembled the swish and pop arm, which is that acetate arm and the pull tab. We connect those with a mini brad. And here I'm just showing where we are putting those little holes. The arm that goes down that right side is the minimum width it needs to be from the bottom, but it can go anywhere up that side. And then I used the other brad, and you can choose any of those holes there to place um, your arm. The further to the left, the less of a swinging motion it's going to have. Over on the right, more of a swinging motion. So I placed the bunny hopping sticker on this, and I'm actually just pulling that back out for just a minute. And then I have gone ahead and adhered my bunny to the acetate arm. You'll notice I haven't trimmed that yet in case I need to move the bunny at all, but I'm using a powder tool on the back of the sticker to deactivate the stickiness. If it's sticky, it's not going to work. So I only want it to stick to the arm and then I want it to have a free range of motion. Now, normally with these swish and pops, Lawn Fawn really recommends, like their example is to die cut this shape again from just white cardstock. You don't need to stamp it or anything and place it on the back of the arm because it gives that more stability. And I'm gonna show you my little hack for this as we get a little further into the card assembly process. I did cut a couple of borders here from some more of the hippity hoppity doodle bug pattern paper so that's our background panel which measures four by five and a quarter inches this is the slimline grassy hillside dies so they're made for slimline cards but i liked the design of these so i went ahead and used them for my card today and i'm going to trim two panels what you're looking for here is a panel to hide the swish and pop arm that great little pull tab there. You want it to hide that. I felt like the grass was getting lost between these two borders, but I really need the two borders because I wanna be tucking elements in between them on the front to help build my scene. So I'm taking a little Simon Says Stamp Green Apple ink and inking up that edge. This is just going to help reinforce the feel of grass and um, also give a little bit more definition to that grassy edge when one pattern paper is placed on another. I used my favorite Gina K blending brushes to apply that dye ink. Now I've purposely left my borders a little bit long right now and I'm going to leave them long until I get everything put together the way I want it to look. We're gonna adhere one grass border to the other, and you can see that is hiding all of the elements. And I'm gonna take some stickers and we are gonna start assembling the scene. I have left in all of my sticker assembly. Normally this would be the part where I am sharing the stamping and the coloring, but I think it's important still to talk about the scene building and why maybe you choose some of the elements that you do. This particular card uses 21 stickers from the sticker collection. So I think that's really awesome. And you're gonna see even when this card's done, how many stickers are left. 
I did flip flop my trees. I noticed in the stickers that there are two of this tree style. They're a different pattern, but it's the same style and I didn't want those next to each other on the left side. So I'm using kind of the rounder tree and then the little skinnier one and then I have a skinny one over on the right. I love this like little bunny crossing sign. So we're gonna pop that down here. Um, I thought I wanted to use this basket of eggs, but then I decided to switch it out for a different one, which you'll see here in just a second. Um, a little sunshine up in the sky. We do wanna fill in the sky area, like the little sun and clouds. And I'm just gonna put that one back and we're gonna use this one. We're gonna fill this scene with bunnies. Um, I played around with a lot of placement. I purposely have left it in, like I said, excuse me, um, so you can, can just kind of see the thought process and how to maybe lay out your own cards. Um, I felt like that was just really clunky to me. I kept trying to put all these bunnies here, but with the bunny that's hopping, the swish and pop bunny, it just felt really forced and just too much going on right here. Now there's gonna be some elements that stick up above the grass. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat this morning. Um, and that's okay. We have not adhered our border yet. I always save adhering my border pretty much till close to the end of the card. I'm gonna kind of play around, and I'm also not pressing these stickers down really hard. You're probably noticing I'm just kind of laying them there, but allowing them to kind of sit until I'm ready to press them down in place really well. If you ever have any trouble with getting your stickers to stay put, I always just put a little uh, Ranger multi matte Medium behind them or another liquid adhesive to help hold them flat. In fact, I'm gonna need to do that for one of the elements that I add to this card. This is a very bunny and carrot heavy card. I decided to go this direction with the first card and then the second card is gonna be a little bit more of the little tractor pulling all of the carts and more of an egg type theme. There's a lot of both. There's lots of cr critters in vehicles. It's just such a cute stamp, or pardon me, stamp, sticker set. I'm liking that layout a little bit better. So I'm starting to think the direction of the card is working. Now there is a notch that needs to be die cut along the right edge of the border. And I'm also testing that swish and pop to see if it's gonna work. Um, obviously my arm is long and it's catching on everything, but I am just kind of testing it. I think it's gonna be fine. I will trim that down when I make sure that's where I want my bunny to go. But the whole idea is to make him look like he's hopping through the background. Now that carrot is in the way and it's going to get die cut and I don't want it to. So I'm gonna just move it for right now and I can figure that out later. You'll notice on the little tab, there's these two notches. You wanna line those up with your swish and pop pull tab, which also is too long, but I save that to the very end to trim it down. And we're going to die cut our notch. I'm being really careful pulling off my post-it tape because it pulled up my sticker a little bit which I will use a little glue to glue that down. So there is our notch. We can put the little uh, pull tab on that once we get to that point, but this is where I'm also gonna be adding my sentiment. And I don't want to place this down on my card until I have stamped and embossed it or stamped it, whatever the case may be. I know Lawn Fawn recommends two layers of foam adhesive. I ended up only using one. My other recommendation is I really like a little square of foam tab above the pull tab. So we place that strip all the way down along the bottom. And your foam adhesive helps kind of make a stopper, if you will, for your element. I'm gonna put a little over here make sure and avoid that. Now I did put some over here and that's going to hinder the pull tab. I left this in because I want you to see that that's not gonna work. When I see how it's not moving, 
it's going to hinder that. So I went to pull it up. It's not pulling up great. There is a product called Undo Adhesive Remover. I use that to pull up my foam adhesive. And we're just gonna leave that free. I am gonna go ahead and trim off my uh, the rest of that acetate arm because look how great he moves when that is out of the way. And then I will pop just that little square right there. And that kind of just helps make a nice little track for our pull tab. Oh, it's looking so cute. So it's probably time to add our sentiment and then finish embellishing. For our greetings today, I am using two phrases from the Simon Says Stamp, You Make Me Hoppy stamp set. We are gonna use Somebody Loves You, which kind of has a great little curve to it, and then Happy Easter. I'm gonna stamp those directly on this border with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. Just gonna try to get those lined up the best we can. I fiddled with them a lot. Sometimes that is just the case because I tend to probably overthink it, but I want things a certain way. And if it shifts just a tiny little bit, I go back and start over. We're gonna use a little powder tool first to kind of help keep the embossing powder sticking just to the stamped sentiment. And then I did stamp this two to three times. I wanted to make sure the coverage was really good. I'm not pressing super hard because you don't want to kind of squish out the stamp and the ink, but I did want to make sure that I had really, really good coverage. And then we're going to grab our white embossing powder and sprinkle this on. If there are any stray embossing powder flakes anywhere that you don't want them, I love to take a dry paintbrush and move those or wipe those away. So there's going to be a couple little spots that I actually did that with, and I'm so sorry, I'm out of the frame. Apparently I needed to bring it really close to my face to see. And then we will heat set this and it just looks so, so cute. I think the stamped sentiment for me really kind of helps give the card a little bit more of that custom feel, even though we're using stickers. I think using stickers is such a fun and kind of underutilized technique in card making. Um, there are so many really cute ones and there's some ways to really use them as you would stamped images. So this is cute, cute. I'm gonna fix that stamp that tried to pull up a little bit. I just put that Ranger multi matte medium underneath. I'm gonna wipe away that excess powder from the embossed area. And then I'm going to flip it over and deactivate anything sticking up above the grassy edge. Because remember, this is going to be sticky and we don't want it to get flattened down to the card. And that's going to allow all of this to stick up. And then when we pull the swish and pop pull tab, everything is still going to move. Now the sky or the background really to me feels like it still needs some stuff. And I'm gonna kind of show you my thought process and how things did not work because I think that's important. Um, I thought I'd use both of the fence pieces. I will end up using the one on this side, but I'm not gonna use both. In fact, I'm going to instead incorporate a bunny that has fallen down into a bucket or an Easter basket with his little tail and feet sticking out, which I think is really cute. Um, we're gonna have some little hearts because you guys know me, if there's a heart accent, I'm probably gonna use it. 
And then there is one bumblebee in this whole sticker thing. I actually looked because I really loved the little teeny tiny bumblebee and I couldn't find any more in this particular sticker pack, but we're gonna use one of the little bumblebees up in the sky. And those things are all going to balance out what's going on. So here's that cute little bunny that's fallen into his Easter basket. Now this guy actually hinders the movement of my swish and pop a lot. I had to work with that. I ended up gluing down the edges of the bucket with some Ranger Multi-Matte Medium so that it was super flat. I put an acrylic block on top. I don't think I should put that in the video, um, but I did all of that so that the movement of my Swish and Pop worked really well. Um, I added in my little carrot by the pull tab, but I wanted to deactivate the part that's hanging over the edge. So that was that powder tool action you saw. And then little stamps, if they are too teeny tiny to pick up with your fingers, or you just don't want to get your oils from your fingers on them, which is often the case for me because it deactivates the stickiness. I like to use some craft tweezers. They are one of my most often used tool. I know you guys ask about them all the time. I am linking, um, I actually have uh, two different pairs I use here. These are my least favorite ones actually, but they're working for this. But I have a pair that I use for my planning. I have a, a planning YouTube channel as well. And I absolutely love using them for planner stickers. And I think I'm gonna get another pair of those Plus there's a pair of tonic, uh, really precision tip tweezers that I have purchased as well. So I'll let you guys know what I think about those. The EK6, these are not the EK6 success ones. I probably used them at some point. I have a couple different pairs of craft tweezers. The, the EK6 success ones just have like a tighter hinge so they hold on to things better. These, I can't think what brand these are, but they just don't have that closure that I like that's so secure. I did remove the backing paper from my foam adhesive and my bunny is still not moving. This is always, it's a great idea to keep playing, keep checking, see how it's pulling up the edge of the bucket and it's just not stopping. Um, and so I need to do something about that corner because it's not going to stay put. So I am going to very carefully here, since I've already placed this down, put some glue down there and I'm going to really press that sticker into the paper. I did slide it like a little acrylic block underneath off camera, help holding it nice and flat, just right underneath the edge of the grassy border. And it ends up working great. I didn't have to do anything. I did flip my panel over and trim off that excess hanging off the edge now. And I'm still having trouble. I really had to work on this. And I promise I ended up getting it stuck down so good because I'm using it right now as I'm talking to you guys and voicing over this video and it's just a smooth, smooth glide and works fantastic. Just maybe took a little extra effort. In fact, I, the glue hadn't dried yet. And so I pulled this guy up and I'm actually going to cover him completely with glue. I know it's a sticker and he should already be pretty sticky. I mean, I thought about, should I move him? Should I move things around? But I feel like the right side of the, the card is really heavy in imagery and we don't need um, anything else over there. I really wanted him back here in the background tumbling into his Easter basket. So, oh yeah, there's my acrylic block holding it down. You can kind of see how that works. Okay, and then this is the other thing that I think is going to help. This is my hack. So I just trimmed out of the sticker sheet the outline of the sticker I'm using on my Swish and Pop arm, so that hopping bunny. And I placed it on a piece of smooth white cardstock and I'm using it as a guide to cut out the shape. Um, it's going to create a perfect size backing that I can then glue to the back of the Swish and Pop arm. And I think that combined with gluing the sticker down is what's going to provide me the ease of movement. 
This is a step that I think you should always do when using the swish and pop, whether you're using a stamped and die cut image, just go ahead and die cut that image again um, and sandwich the acetate arm between the two layers because it makes all the difference in the world. It really, really does. It gives it more stability and I think it just moves so much better. So look how perfect that is. We have trimmed out our bunny shape using the, the outline of the sticker guide as a, or the outline of the sticker as a guide. And then I used my tweezers to pinch that shut while that dries. And look at that, you guys. Yeah, I was a little bit excited because it worked so well. Okay, so finishing details. We need a little pull tab. Um, that shows that there's something interactive about this card. Um, I guess I forgot to tell you too, I did draw in the little bumblebee trail with a black pen. Out of one of the other Doodlebug Hippity Hoppity pattern papers, I die cut this little tab from some orange. And you want your Swish and Pop pull tab at the fully open and then trim it flush with the side of your panel. And then I like to pull it all the way out. And we're going to put a little liquid glue on both sides, pinch that right there to the arm. And then again, I use my craft tweezers to help hold that in place while the liquid glue dries. That just makes sure that we have a really nice and secure bond. We are going to adhere this whole panel then to a side fold card base. I like that it's a little smaller than A2 sized, so you're gonna have a nice little white border all the way around. I always use my Lawn Fawn bone folder to make sure the crease in my card base is nice and secure. I'm putting my adhesive on my card base. And then we're just going to Place that right there. And look how sweet this little scene card is. And I like to use the interactive element quite a bit to make sure the movement is great. Okay, we are gonna revisit the double slider surprise from Lawn Fawn. So this is a couple of years old and I have done several videos on it. I will be linking to those in the supplies down below as well as to another Swish and Pop video. But we have got our elements here die cut from some different Lawn Fawn pattern papers. And we've got some perfectly plaid, we've got some watercolor wishes, and we're going to be building this cute little tractor with all the carts and then kind of like an Easter egg hunt theme throughout the rest of the card design. This is a little bit more involved. So I have my front panel out of plaid, the two side panels out of plaid, and then I cut the grass using um, a stitched hillside border from the watercolor wishes. We're going to, and I did die cut each of those panels from the pattern paper first using the double slider surprise die so that they have the stitching detail and they're perfectly sized and then I'm simply adhering them along the bottom edge of the panel. Something about the double slider surprise. So those two outer rounded rectangles that pull out. I did die cut those from white cardstock as well and we're adhering the whole pattern paper panel to those because I feel like those need to be sturdy. Um, in fact, I'm thinking that Lawn Fawn suggests that on their YouTube channel. It's been a while since I've watched that video, but um, it just, in my opinion, you need those to be as sturdy as possible because that's the moving part. Then we are adding double-sided adhesive to both sides of the track. So here is the track piece. Um, I know I just showed putting it on the front, but we're actually gonna put it on the front and the back. And then this is a two and a quarter inch piece of acetate. And I like to just use stamp packaging. You guys, it works fantastic. So. Um, I am just going to wrap this around the track piece for the double slider surprise. And it's actually a little long, so I'm just gonna trim off a little bit. We're gonna wrap it around and you want it to be not super tight because you want that, that's the moving mechanism. See how it just moves? I always test it with my fingers to make sure it's gonna move really well. So we have our track. We have the two pull-out sides, and then we're gonna have the 
pocket that everything goes in. I'm flipping over my track because we need the adhesive on both sides. And because the back of the pocket is never gonna be shown, it's just seriously what we put the double slider surprise in, I will be um, cutting that from white cardstock. Then we're gonna move the seam all the way over to the left and place a piece of double-sided adhesive over it, flip the track over and put it on the other side. So I'll show you the piece that pulls out to the right we are gonna line up the right side with those right notches, but it's going to go over the adhesive here that's on the left. We're gonna turn our track over. We're gonna pull off the double-sided or the backing paper from our adhesive, flip this over, and it's going to line up with the left side. Press that in place really good. It's not gonna work great because it's not secure yet, but this is how it's gonna pull out. I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea. I know it's a little bit more involved. I personally think the notches make pulling out the elements easier. So on the front panel, we're gonna take this notch and you always line up the notch with the outside of the, the piece you're die cutting. So that's not actually gonna lay over the paper, just the notch pieces. And then we're gonna die cut a notch from each side. And you'll notice it has the perfect little stitching detail. Lawn Fawn thinks of everything. And that's gonna make it so much easier to pull out our scene on each side. Then we're going to fold over the edges and build our pocket and put the rest of our double slider surprise together so that we can finish our card. I like to pull off the backing paper from one first and I actually put the double-sided adhesive in the wrong spot. So I'll have to fix that or I don't even fix it. I just use it to attach it later, I'll show you. And then I'm only gonna attach the one side. So we have our pocket, I'm gonna open up our pocket we're gonna remove the backing paper from the back of the track piece. And then we're gonna line it up with the bottom. I always like to double check that it's the right one. See how it perfectly fits? Right there with the crease, we're gonna line it up. And there is our pocket. We can then remove the backing paper from the front. and then we're gonna fold over that tab. So I put the adhesive on the wrong side of that, but I was gonna try to fix it and then I decided it didn't matter. And then I like to take my bone folder and just press that adhesive in really well. We'll just put another piece of double-sided adhesive on the back to secure our pocket. That's it. It seems so intimidating, and I remember the first few of these I made were just so hard, but look at that, you guys. Isn't that fun? And this is gonna fit great on your A2-sized card, even a slimline card if you wanted to, I think would work really cute. And it's gonna give you some play on the outside of the design as well. It can be used vertically or horizontally. Now, because the tractor pulling the carts is the star of the show. I'm starting with that. And I noticed that my stickers must not have gotten cut all the way at the bottom. Um, they're still pulling off, but it's a little bit trickier. So I will end up gluing those down, but not yet. I wanna make sure I get everything where I want it to go. And I fiddled with these tractor pieces quite a bit, getting the placement just right. And I'm gonna use all five carts that come in this stamps, uh, stamp set. So there's the three pieces here and there's two over on the other sheet, which you can see. Ultimately, I decided to do the paint can cart and the tractor over on the right side. And then we're gonna have the four carts going in the center panel. So those actually won't be hidden. And then the other hidden elements over on the left side is gonna be the Easter basket and a bunny and a chick and the egg hunt sign. 
And then we'll just build like eggs and chicks and cute little animals all the way around the bottom and then use the other sunshine and the cloud images from the sticker sheet to round out our scene. Just scene building with stickers. How cute is that, you guys? I have to say, I this turned out even better than I thought it was going to. I was really excited about it. This one's going to actually go to my nephew. I think he'll really... He loves the interactive card, so does my niece. Um, to me, I think these just work really great for kiddos. Um, doesn't have to be little kiddos either, but I just really love the whimsical feel of them. And that little egg hunt sign is so cute. I knew I wanted to use both signs in the sticker sheet, so I used the bunny crossing one on the first card and then of course the egg hunt one here. And then I played around with placement. So that fence piece, I don't know, you guys, it gave me some fits. I tried to use it on the first card. I tried to use both of them on the first card and only used one. And then I tried to use it down here, but I was kind of forgetting. I need to save some space for sentiment. Um, and I want to stamp it directly on here. I will tell you, I stamped it after I put this together. And I wish I hadn't, but you know, it happens. So it's okay. It, I made it work and I'm, I'm happy with it, but it just would have been easier while the panel was still flat before it was assembled. Of course, we got to have some little hearts coming out of the smokestack of our tractor. I love those. I think little hearts always. And you can see how many stickers I've used. Now I did not count how many I used on this card. On the first card, I counted them and I thought it'll be so fun. I mean, I probably could, but uh, I use so many stickers. Well, just on the slider surprise alone, I used 32 stickers. Now I want you, you can see the sticker sheets. I have used so many stickers on just two cards and there's still a lot left. There's all of the cute critters on bikes and carrot cars and regular cars and airplanes. You could completely create another card just with those. Um, plus there's like jelly beans and flowers and the hot air balloon. Those are all images I didn't get to. Um, paint cans. So there still is a lot of stickers to use even after I've put together these two very sticker heavy cards. I'm liking this scene a little bit better. So we got some cute, a cute little lamb and a chick and some grass and things and another chick down here along the bottom. I will have to remove one of those grass images just to make this work a little better. We've got our Easter basket and bunny and a, the other carrot over here on the left and I decided before I get too much further I better stamp my sentiments. So this stant sentiment, both sentiments, I'm using Hoppy Easter, Somebody Loves You, so they're pretty similar, uh, is from the Happy Easter stamp set. This is a little mini stamp set from Simon Says Stamp from several years ago. And I'm again going to get that lined up. This was tricky because it's right where all those folds are. Um, I really had to work to make sure that I got that stamped well. But in the end, I was really happy with that. So I stamped the Hoppy Easter first a couple times. And then I'm going to stamp Somebody Loves You. So I removed it. I cleaned it and removed it. And I haven't added my embossing powder yet. And this was the tricky one, getting this stamped so that everything transferred. Okay, let's add our embossing powder. And then we're gonna pop this on a background and add some decorative elements to the background and a few extra little pieces to our scene to really make it nice and full. I think the interactive cards um, or dies from Lawn Fawn just pair perfectly with fun stickers like this. 
Um, so maybe you might have some stickers in your stash. Maybe you subscribe to the Simon Says Stamp Card Kit. Um, I know they've done a few different kits that have stickers like this in them. This is a great way to use them up. It's a great way to create some really cute whimsical cards. And of course your dies, you can use for many, many, many cards. So um, you might make a more involved card with stamping and then you can do quick and easy ones that still pack a punch. That's the thing. Stickers might be kind of, you know, considered the easy way out or whatever. Um, but you still, by adding the interactive elements, I think they are just so much fun. Um, I will link to the other video I did with similar cards using Christmas stickers at the end of this video. If you want to check that out, check the description box below for more double slider surprise idea links, as well as the other swish and pop card I have done. Um, that way, if you want to see some other ideas, maybe, you know, see the card be put together uh, a couple more times, you can check those out there. The key to making this scene work for me was adding some things, obviously along that landscape border, but then down along the bottom. Um, so on the front panel, of course, we have the critters and things, but on the side panels, I'm just adding like some little eggs and little grass pieces. Um, and that all works to really make this super, super cute. So I think I mentioned these are going to my niece and nephew. Um, also, I will link in the description box below some other things I made with elements from the Easter limited edition card kit for 2021 from Simon Says Stamp because they I made these little gift bags with chicks on them. So the kids are getting these cards with the little gift bag with some goodies. And they really coordinate nice because I use some flower stickers from these sticker sheets with that, plus some of the perfectly plaid lawn fawn pattern, patterned paper. Really fun. And I do wanna mention my first card had doodlebug pattern paper. This has lawn fawn and look how great they kind of work together. I really love that. In fact, the background of this card, our double slider surprise card is going to be a, a doodlebug pattern paper. So I've attached my slider surprise to my card background and that little teeny tiny plaid is like a rainbow plaid. I don't know that it shows as great on camera. And then I'm adding some little pull tabs from the double slider surprise. They have a few options. This is kind of more the basic option. I just die cut it from some doodle pug rainbow paper from the hippity hoppity paper pad. And then I like to have mine hang off the edge because I think it's a little easier to pick them up but I ended up tucking them back behind the stickers because I didn't want them to cover up my sticker scene. So you'll notice I'm just kind of carefully popping up that sticker and popping them underneath, but the tabs do make it so much easier for the recipient to um, easily pull out those elements. Then to dress up our background, I am taking the larger eggs from the sticker sheet, the hippity hoppity doodle bug sticker sheet, and we're going to place them all around the perimeter of the background. Um, I trimmed them down in places and I often, I think I used pretty much for all of them that I did this. Anything I trimmed off, I used elsewhere. So it kind of gave me a double eggs because I could have like little pieces peeking around the edges from parts that I've already trimmed off. And I love how this just adds a little burst of color to that simple pattern paper background. We'll add a little piece there. Let's see what else we've got. I like these little stripes. And I'm gonna add just a few more of these to finish off my card design.
And here's where tweezers come in handy again, as it allows you to kind of pick up those little pieces very easily. I'm added just a couple more and then my card is all finished. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these Easter interactive cards using stickers. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring stickers used with interactive die cut elements that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.